You're listening to the Augmented Experience Podcast. My name is Joshua Bellas. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down with fellow enthusiasts to talk about what's going on in the technology, business, and gaming world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. My name is Joshua Vellis. I'm your host as usual. And today I have a special episode lined up for you guys today, especially if you're somebody that's interested in cars, because we're going to be talking about electric cars today. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about two of the most well-known electric car companies on the planet right now. Obviously, one of them is more well-known than the other. So obviously, the first one is Tesla. Obviously, most of us know what a Tesla is or what Tesla like overall is. We know who founded it, Elon Musk, arguably one of the most polarizing individuals on the planet right now, especially on Twitter. Um, And then we have Rivian. So you're probably wondering, Josh, what the heck is Rivian? I never heard of this thing. So just to give you a brief summary of who they are, Rivian has been around since 2009. They're an electric car company that's just been sitting in the background currently gathering resources and gathering information or data to basically make an electric car. And it wasn't until 2018 at an LA car show that they showed off the two cars that they're working on. These cars won't be ready until 2020, 2021, and it's the Rivian SUV and the Rivian truck. So the fact that Rivian is gonna be releasing the first electric truck and SUV, but obviously the truck holds a little bit more significance because it's a truck that it's gonna be interesting how this plays out, especially because what they're offering for this truck or specifically the specs behind this truck, because it's pretty crazy on what they're saying this truck is going to be able to do and what they're saying it has. So what's the specs? Obviously, this truck is going to have the biggest battery out of every single electric car on the planet right now. And because of this big battery, it will be able to have a total mileage of 400 miles so if say the model s or model 3 sports version of those cars max range they can get is 325 350 350 miles the rivian is going to add an extra 50 and it's arguably going to be faster because this car is going to have a four motor drive so that means it's going to have four motors one in each wheel and because of that this car is going to be able to go 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds so for a truck, this thing's going to haul ass. And obviously it's a truck, so it needs to tow. So how much is it going to tow? Based on what they said, quote unquote, this is what they said, the truck is going to be able to tow 11,000 pounds. Obviously, compared to most nicer trucks or trucks in similar price range or similar body type, it is going to beat them by two, about 2,000, 3,000 pounds. But obviously you know we still need to see it do that we it's just what they've said obviously when it comes to how fast it goes we've seen it because people have driven it and they've can confirm that's how fast it goes obviously we haven't seen anything regarding the battery and how if it can actually hit 400 miles of range obviously if it can go 400 miles in range but you know all that will be in due time now what makes this truck special besides being obviously the first electric truck This truck has been deemed as the Tesla killer, not only because it's going to be in the similar price range as a Tesla, but the fact that it offers more for a similar price, because obviously that's what people have been asking Tesla for the past few years is they want an electric truck. Obviously, Tesla is not going to make an electric truck anytime soon because for 2020, that's when they're going to start production of the Roadsters. And obviously Tesla really loves the Roadster because it was their first car they ever made was the Roadster, the original Roadster, which got sent into space. Um, So yeah, we're not gonna get an electric truck from Tesla for a while now. But the fact that the Rivian is gonna take its spot in the same year that they start production for the Roadster is pretty huge because, you know, especially in the American market, let's just say talking about only America, Trucks are very popular in America, or depending on the state, obviously in the South, trucks are very popular here in the South. So it is going to be interesting because that's who they're going to try to target is the truck lover, 
because that's why they make the electric truck and it's very enticing for what it offers even though yes in terms of price it is going to be a lot more expensive compared to a normal electric you know, gas truck because obviously this thing is going to be priced between 50 to 70 thousand dollars that's pretty expensive for a truck because this thing body size is comparable to a toyota tacoma at least but obviously it's able to tow more and it's gonna do more but you know like i said that we need that needs to be seen to, to believe but i think it's interesting because the fact that this company not only just showed off their cars like less than a year ago not even a year ago like barely a few months ago like because we're barely just coming into 2019 but amazon last week actually pumped in 700 million dollars into rivian and amazon hasn't really done that because obviously there was rumors going around that amazon wanted to make a car with alexa i think it might have flopped and amazon saw a good opportunity to invest in a company that has a lot of interest right now so you know good thing for rivian because obviously that's 700 million extra that they just got from a big company and a big backer but it's interesting to me especially because when you look at the rivian in pictures i'll be honest the thing looks kind of ugly i think it just comes down to preference i think it looks cool like i like the design i get that you know the headlight situation and things like that the thing looks kind of ugly but i get what you guys are getting at I still think it looks decent because because of well obviously besides being electric I think for a truck it's a good start for the electric truck obviously one thing that I don't agree with when it comes to designing electric cars is that they think that they have to create some futuristic looking design when obviously you want to imagine what it would look like if say I don't know Ford made an electric truck or electric car to begin with like we're talking about at least a century's worth of like design language that they've built up and that they learned how to make it look good. So it is interesting that they people still keep believing that when you make an electric car that it has to look like weird. It doesn't because obviously that's why Tesla designed the Teslas the way they did because they want them to be appealing to obviously the market, obviously whether it be the upper class, middle class or you know, maybe the lower class, depending on how you view it, but you get the point. They're made to look like luxury cars, and the Rivian looks pretty ugly, but, you know, its offering is very enticing. So what, why do people call it a Tesla killer? I think the main reason they call it a Tesla killer is just because ever since Tesla was around, many car companies have been predicting that they're going to fail, that they're going to flop, that they're just waiting for them to go out of business just to buy them. Obviously, I'm going to be real with you guys. Yes, Tesla. To invest in Tesla is a very wonky thing to do. It's not because that the product isn't good. It's just the way on how that product is being sold and distributed is kind of an issue, especially because Tesla isn't selling cars the normal way or the traditional way, which is selling them at a dealership because they're selling them online. And obviously, like, you know, that's kind of weird because if you tell like a person on the street, hey, would you pre-order a car? They're going to be like, why would I pre-order a car if I can just go to a dealership and get it? Like that's the mindset. Obviously, I do believe that Tesla needs to have a dealership. I believe that that's arguably the better direction to go to is to actually have a physical dealership that people can go to and buy Teslas because, you know, if somebody can see it right there in front of them and get to test drive it a little bit, then yeah, it's going to be easier to sell. That's why the model works. And that's why, you know, people have a lot of stocks in all the big car companies because the dealerships are an easy way to sell cars. It's easy to push them out. And obviously with Tesla, you know, you have to wait a long time to get a car. So you have to put a big deposit down and you have to wait at least about two to three years. And then hopefully you get the car in theory. And it's, I'd argue it's just a mess, but obviously I get they're working on it. But the reason people have called it a Tesla killer is because of compared to the Teslas, it offers more value. However, there's one thing that people keep forgetting when it comes to electric cars that I think we need to take into consideration is the fact that, yes, you need to be a good car company first. You need to have an established name. You need to have an established brand. You need to look good while selling the car. The car needs to look good, at least for some people. But 
when it comes to electric cars, this is where it differentiates itself from normal gas cars, is you need to be a software company as well. And obviously Tesla recently, about like a few months ago, announced that they had reached over 1 billion miles traveled in autonomous driving. So that's a lot of data that they can use to improve the automated driving of the car. Obviously, yes, autonomous driving is a very scary thing in real life because we're talking about a robot or specifically the car or AI, depending on what you want to use, um, is driving the car for you. And you basically, you have no control of it. Yes, I understand that that's a very scary thing. And yes, it has actually caused accidents. We're not going to say it doesn't. But the fact that Tesla now has over a billion miles in data that they can now use, they can now use that to improve the software because that's how Tesla cars operate is that they receive updates. They're like smartphones on wheels, basically, that they get updates and that's how you get more features. And that's what improves the car as time goes by. So it's interesting, but where does this leave Rivian specifically? Because Rivian, obviously they don't have a brand, like they have a name, they have a car, but not that many people know about it. And I guarantee you, say if I went up to like the center square here in my college campus and I asked a hundred people, Hey, have you heard of this car company before? I probably would bet you a hundred dollars, maybe one to two people or maximum four people out of those hundred people will know what Rivian is. But if I ask them if they know what Tesla is, I guarantee you that it will be a lot bigger number. So Rivian's kind of in a predicament because not only are are their cars not well known amongst people, unless if you're really well invested in the electric car market, but at the same time, the software is not tested. So they can't do things like autonomous driving and stuff like that because they don't have that kind of data yet. And I think that's what keeps Tesla at top for now is because the fact that they have all these benefits they have like multiple years on the market they already have an established customer base they have people that will buy them people have already been interested in them because they've seen them everywhere and they've obviously you know are interested because they went to the to say things like north park or big stores like that that people can go to and actually see the cars inside the stores or mall specifically because obviously that's what they have them is inside malls and obviously the charging network Obviously, Tesla, compared to all the electric car companies, has one of the best charging networks because they chart, they cover the most area compared to everything. And it's interesting because all the other car companies don't want to work with Tesla in this regard. And I think it's kind of stupid because I don't see why you wouldn't work with them when it comes to this, especially when Tesla open sourced their charging network to everybody. So anybody can use it. And I think it only mainly comes down to how business operates in the sense that you don't want to ask your competitor for help. You don't. That's just how business is. You want to make it yourself or don't do it at all. And I think that's why companies like Ford don't really want to try making an electric car because, well, duh, they want to keep making you buy gas cars because obviously that's their bread and butter. That's what makes them their most money. Obviously, if I if t- Ford ever decided to make an electric car, I think it would be great. I think if they ever decide to make an electric car with uh, more specifically, an electric Mustang, I think it would look pretty badass because the Mustangs already look good depending on you know what year you're looking at. But I think the Mustang would definitely benefit the most. But obviously, a truck would be a lot bigger issue because you know they're going to need to get that battery from somewhere. Because obviously, you know F-150s, F-350s, specifically the 350s are huge, so they're going to need a pretty big battery for that sucker. And that's kind of the predicament we're in right now is because Rivian doesn't, I'm not going to say they don't know what to do, but the fact that they openly stated that they won't use the charging at work, they're not getting their batteries from Tesla. They're getting it from somewhere. Somebody's making them. And so we don't know who it is, but obviously, and then we got more benefits to it because Rivian, obviously they got a pretty big factory, at least compared to Tesla. I think they have a bigger factory because they're using an old Mitsubishi factory in i think it was illinois or somewhere like that i think if i'm correct um so it's a pretty big factory so obviously it's obviously from an established brand it's mishubishi it's already an established brand so the factory is going to be pretty big as well 
And obviously now they have a lot of big tech YouTubers or people that are really interested in electric cars are talking about them a lot. So you have a lot of news and media moving around, especially with now Amazon supporting the company, they're getting a lot more benefits because, well, the Amazon publicly donated $700 million into the company. So it's something interesting to think about. So what impact is the Rivian going to have on the market? In my opinion, I think the Rivian is going to sell all right, but I think it's going to be a tough sell in America. Here's why. I believe the Rivian is going to have a tough time selling in America, even though it makes logical sense that it's going to sell well because it's a truck and Americans like trucks. But you're going to have to sell the people that don't buy electric cars or people that already have diesel or gasoline trucks you're gonna have to sell the truck to them and in order to do that you have to make sure the truck lives up to the standards because well duh like people mostly buy trucks to be productive unless if you're one of those people and you just have a big old truck just to look cool then you know then obviously i'd argue something else but you know that's a that's a topic for another time but You have to sell it to them. Like you have to sell it to the people that drive F-150s because that's, I'd argue that's what you really should be comparing the Rivian to is not comparing it to Tesla, but comparing it to already established truck makers like Ford, Chevy, and GMC, Ram. You have to compare it to them because they're the main ones that you're trying to target. You're targeting their customers. And it's going to be a tough sell because most people that tend to drive trucks that not trying to stereotype people, but most of the people that drive trucks are usually people that usually or is mostly considered based on studies and what they've considered that most people that drive trucks are considered people that don't care about the environment. I don't agree with that personally. And, but that's just what the number they, the numbers they've accumulated, but I don't believe them full heartedly, but I get what they're trying to say that, Usually people that own trucks are people that just don't care and they, you know, they want something that can do their job, even though, yes, in theory, it does do a lot of damage to the environment because obviously it is producing a lot of CO2. And when it comes to that, you're going to have to try to sell the truck to them. So you're going to need to entice them. But obviously that's really hard because that's another problem that electric cars have is that they're so expensive. Electric cars are not cheap. Until electric cars can figure out how to lower the cost of manufacturing to make it easier to sell them, then we're kind of stuck in a standstill because, yes, electric cars are the future. I'm not going to deny that. It's just the fact that they are a tough sell right now. That's why even Tesla is struggling to sell because nobody wants to drop $80,000 on a car that can barely go 230 miles and I can just buy a gas car for like more than a fraction of the cost, like one fourth of the cost, and it will go at least more than three to 400 miles in total. And obviously, yes, you know, that's not accounting for how much you have to spend on gas and then accounting for how much you have to pay when the engine or a radiator or things like that break, which are costs that you don't have to worry about when driving an electric car, because the only thing you have to worry about is just the battery. And obviously the battery lasts for about seven to 10 years. So, you know, it shouldn't be that bad. And obviously, you know, it takes time for the car to pay for itself. Like, you know, you're going to pay a big fat chunk up front. And then over time, the money you save is what pays for the car. And, you know, it's still like, I still believe that electric cars, either one need to be leased two, they need to be cheaper. And number three, is if you're going to charge that much for an electric car, they need to be doing better than the gas cars because if they're not, people don't want to buy them. Like people want cars that can do trips across states. And that's also another problem is the fact that charging networks aren't everywhere. Even though Tesla has one of the biggest charging networks on the planet, it still doesn't cover the entire US. And so that means people like me that are in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest in Lubbock, you know, if I was to take my car, say going to Dallas, like my gas car, when I still had it, obviously, was able to do the whole trip in one tank. And that's because I was able to go over 340 miles with my whole tank. 
But with a Tesla, I wouldn't be able to make the trip with a Tesla because obviously 250 is not 350 miles. They don't add up. So, you know, I would have to stop at a charging station. But the problem is, is there's not that many charging stations in that route. And the routes to take me from Lubbock to Dallas are in small towns that are in the middle of nowhere. And that's kind of an issue because, heck, I wouldn't even make it to Fort Worth for Christ's sake. But you get the point. The charging network needs to be improved. It needs to be more spread out and in places where it makes it accessible for people to use it, to have those cars. Because, you know, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you have nowhere to charge your car, you're basically screwed. So that's an issue. Obviously, yes, the Rivian is going to, quote unquote, remedy this issue because it's going to cover 400 miles. So, yes, I will be able to take this truck across states and then charge it when I get home. So that's a benefit, in my opinion. The problem is, is still like it's not cheap. And then, you know, depending on how many are made, because Rivian has gone on record and said that they're not making that many cars. They're making an estimate that they at least want to sell 100,000 in the first year which is good, especially for a car company that, you know, is building their brand. I think that's a great way to start off at least, you know, not set the bar saying, yeah, we're going to sell a million cars because they're not going to meet that. They're going to fail. A hundred thousand is at least fair. I think that's reasonable. And depending on how well it sells, I think obviously, you know, we're going to start seeing more and more. And then maybe who knows? I'm not saying it's out of their own possibility, but I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to work with Tesla. But the fact that it's still a tough sell because electric cars still aren't still aren't at the point that they need to be to be productive in the market even though yes for the environment they're great it's just there's so much crap electric cars on the market and so very few little ones there's not that many good electric cars on the market most electric cars on the market are crap like If you have car electric cars on the market that are like about sixty thousand dollars and they're only getting eighty five miles of range, that's garbage. Like that's pure utter garbage. Like that barely can even get you to work and back. Like that's terrible. And but you get my point. Is that we're stuck in a predicament. Now, I'm a personally a big supporter of the Rivian. I hope the Rivian does well, and I personally if when I get my engineering job, if the Rivian's still on the market, I'll probably buy one because I like I'm not a truck person, but, you know, I would still drive an electric truck, especially if I know that I'm getting a lot of range and I'm getting a lot of benefits from it. Obviously, yes, Rivian, there's a lot of things they have to work on. They have to work on software. They have to work on marketing. They have to work on getting this car in the hands of the people that they're trying to sell to, which is basically truck owners. That's who they're trying to get it to. They're trying to get it to people that have trucks or people that are looking to buy a truck. And I think that should be what their marketing strategy should be because that's how you're going to be more effective. Now, do I think all this will come to fruition? I think some of it will, unless if, you know, unless if Tesla just throws a curveball and then just makes an electric truck, then obviously being real it's going to sell a lot easier compared to the rivian and obviously if tesla makes an electric truck and it's cheaper than rivian it does just as good and probably if it looks nicer i think yeah the rivian's pretty much screwed and that's really all we can hope for and all we can really do at this point is just wait and see because the rivian hasn't even started production yet in theory they should be starting production near the end of this year or at least early 2020 and then 2021 is when they'll be on sale or they're already in production and now they're about to start selling them because obviously they had one ready because they have a driving model ready to go at los angeles last year so i wouldn't be surprised if they're already starting production i haven't heard anything about starting production recently but you know that's just what i've seen and what i've heard and what i've been researching about it i'm personally interested and yeah, I think that's really all I got for you guys today. Like, I know today is a very short episode compared to, you know, the past few episodes, but I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I hope you enjoy this more discussion regarding electric cars, especially because this is something I really care about and something I really enjoy talking about because I like the idea of electric cars. I will keep going on record. I'm going to sound like a broken record. Electric cars are the future. Overall, if they lower the price, 
make the manufacturing a lot easier and then obviously make them more available slash affordable, then electric cars will obviously, you know, erase gas cars off the market basically because if you put an emphasis on electric cars, not only will gas prices not matter because, you know, electric is always going to be cheaper because it's a renewable resource and it's not a finite resource like gasoline. Obviously, some people have made the argument that, you know, there will no longer be wars for oil anymore because, you know, we can just have our own renewable resource. I don't know about that. Human nature, there's always going to be wars no matter what we do. We always find a way to piss somebody off. But that it is interesting. I do like the idea of electric cars. I'm still going to keep saying they are the future. That we just need to get to the point that technology is more is cheaper to make. It's makes it more affordable and at the same time makes it a lot easier to put in the hands of consumers, especially because I think that's what's holding back the electric car market is that they don't have dealerships. It's all online. And if one of the big car companies actually decided to hop on the train and, you know, made an electric car, then yeah, I think electric cars are going to start take basically going to make gas cars go to the way of the dinosaurs basically obviously yes like if electric cars start booming then obviously you know stocks for ford and all of them are going to drop hard unless if they make electric cars but if they start making electric cars they have a higher chance of being good because they already have years of experience like we're talking decades to centuries of experience making cars guys so you get what I mean is it's a win-win overall for everybody because not only if there's more people competing in the electric car market, then prices are going to go down and obviously it's going to be better quality because everybody's competing to get your money. And obviously, yeah, electric cars are going to last longer because they're not going to break as easy in theory because there's not that much to break. And, you know, in theory, yeah, it'll be cheaper in the long run overall. And then obviously when prices go down, then it will be just cheaper overall. So, everything will just be cheaper and then obviously for people that care about the environment obviously it'll be better for the environment so yeah that's all i got for you guys today in reality i've just been so stressed this entire week especially with everything i've been up to like i've just been doing stuff for school a lot of papers i had to write and then obviously this morning i was really annoyed because my ring fell in the toilet and that was the the christmas gift i got for me and my girlfriend so i'm really pissed but you know everything's good like i've just been enjoying myself so far this semester has been great so far i've had a fun time getting to see my friends again making new friends and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i love you guys to death you guys take care of yourselves have a wonderful week i love you guys bye Thank you.